your next meeting is, I think, August 18th. Yes. Is a rate hike all but guaranteed on the 18th of August? Yes, yeah, all but guaranteed. I, of course, I, that right now, I cannot predict how every board member will vote, but it's at least 25 and maybe 50. I don't think anybody wants uh, 75. Okay, and what would sway you in favor of 50 or, or 25? Because between now and then, we have two inflation reports. Uh, what else do we have? So what are you looking at there to make that distinction? Uh, if the personally, if the if the inflation is uh, let's say six oh, percent, uh, no, I'm, more, I'm looking more at the month-on-month -month numbers, and okay. if that those two are high, like uh, last month was uh, the last reported month was 0.7 annualized. That's uh, quite a bit, right? So if we get bad month-on-month -month numbers, we we will have to respond. Because even though the basic cost of inflation is supply, it's likely to have uh, knock-on effects on expectations, and therefore we will we'll have to we'll have to act before uh, the supply shocks are converted to higher future inflationary expectations. Uh, understood. So, given I would imagine one or two more hikes. Given the information you have right now, realistically, and to avoid disruptions in the market, the clearer we are, the better, I would imagine. Where do you see you taking rates this year, given the information you have? Okay, uh, let me first give you a background. Our, our rate of 2% before the last two hikes were uh, historic lows. Uh, because they were essentially a reaction to the pandemic. In addition, we we let money to the government and uh, bought uh, a trillion pesos in the secondary market of the government bought. So we actually already had an exit plan. The original plan was the exit will begin uh, in the third or the fourth quarter. So what happened was the recent developments made us advance the implementation of the exit plan. So at the very least, we should be moving to uh, an inflation, a, a, a policy rate that is higher than the midpoint of our target, which is 3%, at the very least. So, uh, so that, means, uh, that means we have to do more, we have to do uh, uh, a, 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 a hundred more, at least. And it's really Governor, a question... How much focus Yes. I was just going to say, how much focus are you placing on interest rate differentials, what the Fed is doing, and the fact that in Asia it's a bit more of a complicated environment because the, the situation in China uh, as a major economy is very different. Does that weigh into your decision making? Well, to the extent that uh, it causes a uh, large enough impact on the exchange rate to add up to, to inflation, the uh, our numbers show that the exchange rates uh, translate relatively well. Tra the translation of uh, exchange rate changes to inflation is what, but for every one percent, about 0.1 percent. So if it's quite large, then uh, then uh, we we have to we have to uh, have a higher policy rate than otherwise, or either that or sell foreign exchange. So, uh, so in other words, uh, we are not going to match uh, the rate increase to the Fed, but we cannot totally ignore it either. And uh, of course, the reason is. Where would is you like we, to see the pay, sir? Well, as I said, we really don't have a position on the peso. The, the point is that actually, some changes in exchange rates are good for the economy. Because, uh, for instance, uh, our very high growth uh, this year is causing uh, much uh, import growth that's much higher than our export growth because the uh, trading partners are not uh, growing as fast as we are. So, and therefore, uh, changes in the exchange rate are actually natural market responses uh, to to the widening to the widening uh, carrot account deficit.
Okay, but uh, nonetheless, if uh, if the increase in the exchange rate because of the interest rate depression would add on further to inflationary expectations and to knock on effects of the supply side effects on inflation, then uh, we we would add, we would have policy rates that are other, uh, higher than otherwise under normal times. So you're right. I understood, the, Governor Medallia. Right. Yes. I just wanted to pick up on that. I, I didn't mean to, to, to interrupt there because so we're well aware that the, the, the central bank does not use or does not use the exchange rate uh, as a policy tool. But would you not acknowledge that the peso at 55, given that you are an importing country, food, energy, what have you, is creating unwanted inflationary pressures? Yeah, that's why I said that the translation of a 1% change in the exchange rate will be about 0 0.1, 0.05 to 0.1% uh, addition to the inflation rate. So clearly we have to be concerned about it. And uh, if the inflation is already high, we are more concerned about it. So under normal times, uh, we will not, for instance, the inflation is three, we will not be concerned about it at all. But under, these are not normal times. We are a lot more concerned about the inflation effects of uh, a, a, a more depreciated peso, given that we already have very high inflation. Mm -hmm. So how much are you thinking about talking about intervention at this point? What could we expect? Mm -hmm. Well, as I said, uh, a series of... Uh, uh, in a series of increases. Uh, to begin with, we're already exiting from a fairly low uh, uh, initial policy rate. So, uh, so it's really a question of uh, how much it's a meeting and how many meetings. And uh, I would not, uh, I would not rule out, uh, including the first fifty. I will not rule out. Uh, the possibility of, of course, these are all very data dependent. I will not rule out uh, uh, the policy rate uh, increasing by another 150 basis points by the by the end of the year. So, uh, so, so, so that's the situation. The the need to exit from our very very unconventional monetary policies that were necessitated by the pandemic became more urgent because of uh, what's happening in in uh, the advanced countries and because of the supply shocks. Uh, understood. Uh, Governor, you know, I was just there, in fact, in town about two weeks ago. And everyone's talking about oil prices. In fact, some public transport uh, groups have actually halted operations because, you know, the, the economics just don't make sense uh, in, in terms of running the vehicles. So I guess my question is, from a growth perspective, do you do you see you be do you see the country being able to meet the inflation the growth target given inflation dynamics right now, or will you need to revise your growth forecast lower? Well, actually, our growth forecast will be more dependent on what happens to the growth rate of our major trading partners because clearly we cannot afford uh, excessive. Uh, uh, widening of the, the current account deficits. That's not sustainable. So, but uh, I think from the point of view of demand, there is uh, quite a bit of space because uh, relative, the current GDP levels are just 3% higher 